Hi, the last time you saw me on my walk, I had managed to get both legs from the starting minehead to Instow, just under 80 miles. This week, my target is to get to Crackington Haven, just beyond Bude. That's less than 60 miles, but it's a short week and a very rugged section. Officially classified as strenuous to severe walking. Speaking of Instow, it's now behind us, and over the river, that's Appledore, where shipbuilding is still an industry. Uh, these are not rejects. Wish I could walk across or take the now retired ferry, as it's a good few miles round by the bridge at Biddeford. Westwood Ho in the distance, the only place in Britain whose name has an exclamation mark in it. It's actually named after a Charles Kingsley novel. Apart from the name, the only notable features to Westwood Ho are the rather bright holiday huts and a bench that clearly must be dedicated to Monty Don. Now heading for Clavelli and a well-earned pint. Clavelli is a bit of a picture postcard village. As I was saying, these second hand bread trays are used by the locals as toboggans to ferry goods and luggage from the top of the hill to the houses and businesses lower down. They just pile everything on, then drag it up or down the cobbles. The next objective is Hartland Point, officially the western end of the Bristol Channel and the start of the Atlantic Ocean. It's there in the distance where that ray dome is, but that's not the most attractive feature of Hartland Point, nor is the lighthouse. It's the National Trust tea shop. The coast from Hartland Point down to Bude is beautiful, but rugged and littered with a history of wrecked ships. This plaque though is slightly different, as it commemorates a First World War tragedy. Just below here you can still make out a few remains of the MS Johanna, which founded late December 1982. All the crew were rescued, but I bet they had a hell of a job explaining what they were doing to run onto rocks on New Year's Eve. A little south and inland from Hartland Point is the village of Stoke and the fabulous St Necton's Church. Apart from looking stunning, it's full of medieval features. The tower does actually slope. It's not a figment of the camera lens. Further along the coast an interesting building is passed, clinging to the cliffs. It's a hut that the poet and writer Ronald Duncan had built. He would visit each day to enjoy the seclusion and to write. One of the features of the southwest coastal path is the frequency of rivers and streams running into the sea. And this is yet another. Once more, I'm losing height, 
only to regain it once the stream is crossed. But this one is rather special, as I am now entering Cornwall. Morwenstow is another village with a medieval church, but one not as attractive as St Necton's, although the graveyard has an interesting feature. Over the next 100 miles, Cornwall's industrial past will never be far away, absorbed into the landscape and sharing space with nature and present day agriculture. When it comes to hard work, I guess the bonus pay goes to the red top. As always on the southwest coastal path, the sea is never far away, but just occasionally you get a view back that shows several days walking. This one as far back as Heartland Point. Bude is the first large town since Barnstaple, and apart from its famous surfing beach, it has a seawater pool and great pasties. The River Strat runs out to sea, parallel with a canal, linking the areas beyond directly to the sea. No time to dawdle, on to Crackington Haven, and once there I will have covered 134 miles since leaving Minehead. <laughs> 